Welcome to Hope Church. Whether you are online or here in the building, we are so excited that you decided to join us today. If you are in the building, this is your cue to go ahead and enter the sanctuary for our service will start in just a few moments. Our time together will be about an hour and a half. We will begin with praise and worship to God and that will be followed by an amazing message based on the Word of God. You may see people experiencing God in a variety of different ways. This could be singing, shouting, dancing, raising of hands, and even crying. It is our desire that you too will experience God in a new and fresh way today. If you are in the building, we would love for you to visit the Connect Center in the back of our sanctuary. This is a place that you will meet great people and they can answer any questions that you may have about our services or our church. And if you are online, we would love to connect with you on our website or in our chat. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Our service will start in just a few moments.
out your way into the sanctuary. Go ahead and stand on up. Let's praise the Lord. and welcome to church this morning. We are so glad that you decided to join us on this amazing fall morning. No snow in the valley, I'm praising Jesus for that, but it's beautiful on the mountains. If you are here for the first time, we just wanna give you a warm welcome. 
There are some connect cards in the seats in front of you. Would you take that out, fill it out, and in our lobby we have a connect center where we would love the privilege of being able to connect with you. We have a gift bag for you with a gift inside, free coffee card, and some people that would love to greet you out there. Are you ready to worship Jesus this morning? Do you have a reason to worship this morning? If for nothing else, we have Jesus, our Savior, that came to this world, died for our sins so that we could have freedom. And that is what he wants us to live in. So let's pray. God, we give you this time of worship. God, we're so thankful that we can join together and come into this place to worship you. God, I thank you that there's freedom in this house today. God, I thank you that you are here to meet needs. God, each person here, individual, you know them. You know the hairs on their head. You know everything that is going on in their lives here in the sanctuary and online. So God, I ask that you would meet us once again. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.
is a promise to keep. Jesus, the keeper of peace. Peace is a promise to keep. Oh, we need your peace, Jesus. Your presence for this place. Oh, fear and
And I am surrounded And by the arms of the Father And I am surrounded By the songs of Deliverance, we've been liberated from our bondage. We're the sons and the daughters. Let us see.
serve it is so healthy for us to remember and I believe this is a remembering moment for you to stop and remember where you were and where you are now the bondage that you were in where Jesus has brought you freedom the things that were tangled up in your mind that you couldn't think where Jesus stepped in and said no you are free the fact that he sent his son, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, sent his son here to this earth for us to take away our sin so that we could have right standing and communion with God. It is so healthy to remember. He commands you to remember. So we're just gonna take this moment and wait. Why don't you just close your eyes and I want you to remember remember and we posture our hearts to remember I want you to speak it out I want you to tell them out loud what you're thankful for God I'm thankful for you healing my heart God I'm thankful for freedom God, I'm thankful that when the enemy told me I was losing my mind, you said, I have the mind of Christ. God, we're thankful. The song we were just singing says, I am surrounded by the love of the Father. Some of you don't feel like you're surrounded by his love today. You feel like you're surrounded by the things that you're dealing with in your day-to-day -day life. And God says, I want you to step out of that and into the place of being my daughter and my son because you are surrounded. The only way you cannot be surrounded and in him is if you step out. But let's step back in today. There's freedom in this house. We don't just come just to come and feel good. We come to encounter the presence of the living God because one touch from him changes everything. One touch from him changes everything. There are circumstances in this room that are about to shift. There are things in people's hearts that are about to shift. We're going to go back into that song. And we're going to sing that he parted that sea. And we're going to declare it. And we're going to step in to the fact that we are his kids. And he loves us. And he wants the best for us. So when you sing it, you in faith declare that your situation's changing, that you're getting healing, that you're getting freedom. Why? Because we have a loving Father who loves us enough to give us that freedom. You 
God, we thank you that we don't have to be a slave to fear. We don't have to be a slave to bondage because you made a way. You made a way and we declare once more, how great are you, God, for all you have done, all you are and all you are still going to do. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're not in a rush. I thank you that you're here to encounter each person just where they're at. God, I thank you for loving each one of us enough. That you're gonna encounter each of us in the way that we need your love as a father. So God, I'm gonna ask as we close this portion of our worship service, God, that you would just pour out your love because we're your kids. The amount of love that I have for my kids is insurmountable. And your love is so much more than that. So would you love on your kids today? God, I ask that lives would be transformed today and they would never be the same because of encountering who you are. Let freedom flow in this place, Holy Spirit, we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, Hope Church. You may be seated if you can. If you are a kiddo and you are ready to go worship with your friends, raise your hand up and wave at me. There's a lot of kids in this house. Go over to your right and experience some time with your teachers. Let's pray over our kids. We believe in saying yes to the next generation. God, we pray that you would encounter them today. God, that you would speak words to their hearts. And God, I thank you that there's no junior Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that you can encounter them where they need to be encountered today in Jesus' name. God, would you bless our faithful kids volunteers that serve in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so glad you're here today. And like I said before, if you're new, we would love nothing more than to get to know you. It's a privilege that you decided to be here and worship with us today. We have connect cards in our seats. We have a QR code that you can scan to get any information about our church. And we also have some prayer and praise cards, which we love for people to fill those out because we love to be able to partner with you and what's going on in your life and pray with you. We also love to hear the praise reports and we're getting more and more in. And we are so thankful for that. So please take one of those cards out and fill them out for us. I heard it earlier, but I just feel it again so much. That there, there's somebody here that you're like, this is it, God. I'm giving you a chance this morning. And I don't know who you are, but God is saying, I am here and I'm gonna meet you. Just watch me do it. So who you, whoever you are, that put that plea out to God. He is here this morning and he is going to meet you. We're gonna move into our next part of our worship, which is our offering and our giving. This weekend, we had the honor and privilege of serving some families in our community that are foster parents. And we had some volunteers come and we were able to uh, watch the kids so that these parents could go out and enjoy a night out. Is anybody here who served for that? Raise your hand if you are, awesome. Awesome, well thank you so much for that. 
Part of your offering goes so that we can do things like this, so that we can provide hope, encouragement to people in our community. So we say thank you for partnering with us in that. Let's pray. God, I thank you for, I just thank you for the gifts that you give us that we can give back to you. Sometimes I think, God, who am I? What do I have to offer the king of the universe? God, I thank you that as, as we give you, as you command us, 10% of what we earn, the first fruits of what we earn, God, I thank you that you are faithful to bless us in return. So God, I, I declare right now and bless every person who is giving in the auditorium and online. God, that you would multiply their finances, that you would grow our faith to believe for more because you're a big God. God, we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get ready for some hope news. Good morning, Hope Church. My name is Janelle, and this is Hope News. October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so give a big round of applause for our lead pastors, Pastor Lance and Mary Terrell. We also want to thank Pastor David, who is our Community Life Pastor, Pastor Jeremy, who oversees our Eureka Campus. Then we have our Ministry Directors. We have Jess McDonald, who oversees our Worship Arts, Jackie Weber, who is over our Children's Ministry. We have Justin, Sheely, and Taylor Danik, who are over our youth. We just so appreciate how you pour out your lives for us here at this church and serve God with everything that you are. Thank you so much. There are just a few ways that you guys can thank our pastors and leaders. One is by writing an encouraging note and leaving it here in the lobby in the basket. You can give them a personal gift or you can just give financially in the offering and just make sure to put in the memo, Pastor Appreciation. Again, thank you so much to our pastors and our directors. Are you new to Hope Church or interested in your next steps here? Then I would like to invite you to our Discover class. This is an opportunity for you to learn about who we are, our mission and our vision, and to learn how God uniquely designed you to make an impact in your community. This happens the first and second Sunday of each month. Lunch and childcare will be provided. Let us know you're coming by scanning the QR code and we'll see you there. If you are ready to serve on a team and get involved, then we would like you to, yep, scan that QR code in front of you to sign up. Or you can go to hopechurchmt.com slash teams to join. We recently started our prayer and worship nights that we like to call Pursuit. God has been showing up in amazing ways. Just recently, a woman was healed of arthritis, backs were healed, and taste and smell was restored. Praise God. And he's not finished yet. Join us for our next Pursuit Night, which will be on Tuesday, November 1st at 6.30 here at Hope Church, where we're going to be praying specifically for our city and for our nation. It's going to be powerful. Don't miss it. If you're in high school or you're the parent of a high schooler, then we want to see you today after second service in the Fireside Room. This is going to be an opportunity for you to ask all your questions about the upcoming Spring Break missions trip to Mexico. We'll see you there. That's all I have for you today, Hope Church. We'll see you later. Come to me. Come to me, you who are weary, and I will give you rest. I will lead you beside the still waters. I will restore your soul. I see you. I know you. I formed you in your mother's womb. Come, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Good morning, Hope Church. Second server, sirs. I love seeing so many of you. Pastor Lance is in Eureka. It's Vision Sunday there today. So I um, am taking his place. No, I'm not. I'm taking my own place, wearing my own shoes. That's right. Child of God, right here. Anyways, I um, have the honor and the privilege this morning of bringing you a message that has been doing quite a work in my own life. And I can hardly wait to share it with you because as Mary Terrell was saying that, you know, God's going to do something here this morning. And I believe that with all of my heart. You didn't just come here to show up, 
to just do something different because any of you can be competing with a whole lot of other things that go on on a Sunday morning, and yet you're here. And so I believe with everything that God brought you here for such a time as this. So are you ready to receive? Open up your receivers. <laughs> Father, I just thank you that you're in this place. Lord, I sense the hunger of your people, and I sense your heart to deposit and do what only you can do. You are the God of miracles. You are the God that splits the Red Sea so that we can walk right through it. You are the God that called Lazarus out of the grave. You are the God that delivered a demonized man and put him in his right mind in a second. Father, I thank you that you are the God that that heals you are the God that saves Lord I thank you that when we come before you father you don't have nothing to give us but father there is a bountiful table that you have set before us right smack dab in the presence of our enemies and father I thank you today Lord that we say yes to you God we say yes to what you have for us father we want to walk in freedom we want to walk in liberty we want to walk in authority we want to walk in your joy God in the middle of adverse circumstances and father I thank you that you are here to meet your people on an individual detailed very personal level and for that I give you praise God your mercies are new every morning and we take hold of your mercies this morning and we say great are you God and great is your faithfulness amen come on that was a good prayer I got all fired up right there <laughs> so the title of my message is called Living in Peace, Not Pieces. Now, I know that sounds like such a great line, doesn't it? And then the subtitle is The Fence of Offense. And, you know, you don't just talk about offense and talk about something like this. I don't take it lightly. I didn't set out to talk about this, uh, but somehow the Lord thought I was qualified to talk about offense. I didn't bother asking him what those qualifications might be, but I'm here this morning. And as, as I was praying about today, and as, as Pastor Lance asked me um, if I would speak and we've been in a series of peace. I really felt that the Lord began to highlight this particular topic on offense. And um, right as I was preparing this, something happened in my own life that really began to challenge me in this area. I had been working in a particular um, job for just a few months shy of 10 years. And um, in an instant, with new ownership, I received a text and then looked up an email, and my position had been completely terminated, effective immediately. Jesus, help me not be offended. <laughs> like that. It was gone. No closure, just you're done, you've done nothing wrong, we're just changing directions. And I sat in my car with the weight of that and was like, wow, they just done me dirty. And I'm gonna expose this actually. I'm gonna tell people what kind of owners these really are, what they did to me, this hurts, this isn't right. I'm now somehow commissioned by God to shine the light on this horrible thing that happened to me, amen, and save everybody that's going to go in their line of um, services. Yeah, no, no, no. The Lord began to talk to me about offense, his perspective on it, and I want to share it with you this morning because it really is a whole lot bigger and weightier than I thought it would ever be. How many of you have ever been offended? Rest of your lion in church? Man! <laughs> Let's not even talk about the pain and the offense that happens in the body of Christ, right? Because it does happen. But I'm telling you, the songs we were singing this morning about the greatness of God and his plan for our lives has everything to do with this topic. 
I know there was a time when Tim and I were actually like arguing before coming to church. Maybe you don't relate to that, but that happens in our home. And, uh, you know, you get to church, you sit in the front row, you start worshiping or, you know, and then it's like time to grab the hand next to you and you're praying and you're just declaring the goodness of God. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Oh, I'm so mad right now. I just want to squeeze his hand even a little harder. You know, and then we just put on this mask and here we are and we're just going to like power through it and we're just going to trust Jesus and we're, you know, just going to not, not go there because it's not supposed to be like that. We're not supposed to behave like that. And, you know, you'll leave church, you'll go somewhere and you know what? Somebody's going to flip you the bird. It happens. Yeah, it happens. And then what are you going to do? And so every single moment of every day, there are opportunities to get offended. And I'm just being super real with you guys because this is life. This is just life. My text is found in Luke 17, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Oh, look at that, y'all. You got it up there. That's great. Okay. And he said to the disciples... It is impossible that no offenses should come. We can pause right there. This is Jesus speaking, telling his disciples, it is impossible that offenses aren't going to come. They're going to come knocking. It's going to happen. But woe through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone, a heavy burden, were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day, and seven times in a day he returns to you saying, I repent, you will forgive him. Matthew 24, 10 to 12 talks about offenses. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Those are sobering words. Offense is going to come. All you have to do is check your social media. Somebody's always mad at somebody. Somebody's always blocking somebody, taking a break from somebody, deleting somebody. Somebody's always commenting on somebody else's feed, and it usually is argumentative and opinionated. So the big question, how do offenses come? Somebody tell me. How do they come? Shout it out for me. Every direction. And usually through whom do offenses come? People! (laughs) Any of us, maybe. I've been on both ends of it. I've been offended, and I've been the offender. People. People that Jesus loves, that Jesus gave his life for. People. People whose lives matter to the king. People who are so messed up and wounded and didn't even know who Jesus was when he was on the earth. Those were the people in the middle of their darkness, in the middle of them not even understanding him, rejecting him, betraying him. These were the people that he came for, believed in, and gave his life for. These were the people. And you and I are in that category God adores you. God loves you. But offenses are going to come. And what are we going to do with offenses? When I was studying this, um, it was interesting because as I said the word offense, I thought of the word fence. And I know there's one letter difference, S and a C. But I began to think about what offense can do. And there's three things that I want to highlight to you this morning about offense. And before I do that, I want to clarify something. You can receive hurt, and you can receive pain, 
and you can feel like somebody looked at you cross-eyed or they didn't spend enough time with you or they didn't follow through on their word or maybe you were actually deeply, deeply wounded. And I don't make light of that. I don't belittle that for a moment. Pain is real and our hearts hurt and we can bleed. The difference is when you are hurt and you want healing you're going to do the things that you feel led to do in order to walk into that path of wholeness. If you're offended by your hurt, you seek to hurt. And that's the difference. I don't want you feeling condemned by this message at all. I just want to clarify because I know how we are. We're going to go way inward. We're going to really look and go, oh, Lord, I got some problems. And I don't want you to leave here like that. But I want you to understand why scripture is so strong about letting us know that offenses are going to come. You can't just rebuke them away. They're just not going to leave and you're never going to have a problem with it again. If there's offense in our heart, it's because we took it. It's not because somebody gave it to you. You made a decision to take it. And you are the only one that can release it and let it go. You can't just pray it away. There's something that you are responsible to do in order to walk into that freedom. And it's not a popular topic, as you can imagine. You really probably didn't want to go to church this morning hearing about how offended you all can get because you already felt bad enough walking in here, especially if there's an issue with your spouse. Oh, I'm so glad we worked that out. <laughs> sometimes Tim is like GQ, and sometimes when I'm mad, he's like DQ. I like okay, but yeah, you, you'll you'll get that all later. I didn't mean the Dairy Queen. Um, one of the things that happens when we allow offense in our hearts, if we allow offense and we allow it to fester. And we begin to feed those impulses in our flesh, anger, jealousy, bitterness, justification. The Bible calls that sowing to the flesh. We're going to reap destruction. If we go to the cross with our frustration and our betrayal, we're going to find our path to peace. The cross is our path to peace. If we don't do that, and we live by the fence of a fence. We are going to be blocked. We're going to be locked. We're going to be fragmented in our emotions. And we're going to live and move out of fragmented pieces versus the peace of God. An offense can stall your God-given assignment. And I want to pause here for a minute and highlight what I'm talking about, the story in Nehemiah, where Nehemiah was sent to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And this is something that God had mandated him to do, to go back, to rebuild, to fortify the city. And it was going to take a lot of work, a lot of, fo a lot of focus. And he stepped out in obedience and began to rebuild the walls. But as he was doing that, I call them his fake friends who came to check on the progress, started to taunt him and distract him and throw questions at him and accusations at him, all kinds of things that were increasingly getting louder and louder. And how many of you know that when you begin to build on something that God has given you to do and it begins to get strong, you're going to take some hits. It's going to happen. Luke 17, it is impossible for offenses not to come. They're going to come. And they're really going to come when you're in the process of building and moving and carrying out the mandate and vision that God has called you to. And this happened to Nehemiah. In the midst of those distractions, he makes a powerful statement. And he says, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. I'm going to tattoo that right on my arm. Look at that every day. 
Somebody comes at me, I am doing a great work. I cannot come down and have that conversation. But it's the truth. This is what happened to him. This is not just a random Bible story. The work that Nehemiah was doing for God was creating a momentum, a buzz, if you will, that was getting the attention of the enemy, and they wanted that progress to halt and slow down. What would have happened had he taken the time to come off of that wall and dialogue with the very ones that were coming at him with accusations and questions and mockery and tauntings? What would have happened? The building would have completely stopped he probably would have completely been drained because he would have been spending so much time putting out all of these little fires. And that is just like the enemy. He's going to bring all these little fires into your life and you're gonna actually believe that it is up to you to put those fires out when what's happening is there's a mandate from God on your life and the enemy has come to completely distract you and obliterate the work of God in your life, making you spin in a cycle and the thing that you're called to do has been halted. You are a child of God. We sang about it this morning. You are a son and a daughter of God. He has commissioned you with a tremendous work to be about his father's business. And it is the enemy's tactic to halt that through offense. And believe me, it will happen and they will come. And your perspective is going to change because of the insults that are being thrown your way. Now, I have been known to sometimes get a little distracted and short-fused and offended. <laughs> Hence, the Lord asked me to talk about this. <laughs> But it's true. And, you know, they're not things that I'm proud of, but I have had to learn. I've had to learn how to, how to move forward and how to keep my eyes on Jesus because I need to know where I'm going and I need to know what I'm doing. And I don't want to spend the rest of my life a walking question mark. And today you're going to know that your life is not a question mark. You are an exclamation mark in the kingdom of God. God has called you to do incredible things that only you can do. And I'm here to speak some life over some of you today who have even been in the ministry and are no longer in the ministry because you are feeling like you've been disqualified and there's something so wrong with you when God has you in a season of rest. This is a word for somebody this morning. God has you in a place where you can take a breath and where you can abide with him so that he can get rid of the fog and the debris that has been clouding your vision. We are desperate to see in a world that just throws nothing but smoke bombs in our direction. It's everywhere. And our vision is important and offense is the number one thing that hits every single person and especially in the church. Why? Because we are called to be God's light in a world that's dark. He's called us to be light, salt, to bring out the flavors of him in the world. We can't do that if we're all divided and all frustrated and, you know, taking on hits and labels that people are speaking over us. And let me tell you something that really frustrates me. Some of those labels, and I, I am privileged to work with many people in my life that struggle with identity, but I have seen how the body of Christ can remain stuck in a place because we are constantly fighting the same things over and over again. We are so busy identifying all of the lies. And hear me, it's important. And I believe in healing and working through things. But the enemy can keep you stuck in one place and you will spend so much time trying to figure that out and trying to perform your way through prayer and fasting and praying in the Holy Ghost and rebuking the devil. And you're not moving from that place. That is nothing but religious, demonic garbage. And it's keeping you from the wall. It's keeping you from building. It's making it all about you. 
And it's all about Jesus through you. He's the focus. What if he were to get offended? I talked about this in the first service. If, if anyone is an example, it's Jesus. What if after spending a day, just like Pastor Lance was talking about, you know, Jesus walking on the water and, you know, inviting Peter to come out and walk on the water. And then after all of that, you know, the disciples are still struggling and, you know, Jesus goes away to that quiet place to commune with his father. And what if the conversation went something like this? You know, Father, I walked on the water. I'm proclaiming who you are. The disciples are still not believing me. They're freaking out constantly. They're frustrating me. Not only that, we ran out of food. I knew that you were going to come through, but it was still, I'm having to work with these knuckleheads day after day. They're exhausting. They're, they're tiring me out. I'm getting so frustrated with them. They don't bring me any joy. They just do their own thing. Every single day, I'm working with them. They don't care. They don't care. They're the first to deny me. I'm not going to the cross. Not going. Like, do you ever think about Jesus talking like that? We don't, because he didn't. And yet he could have. He could have. He could have thrown his hands in the air and said, okay, Marty, if you come to me one more time with that issue, like, peace out. He doesn't. He doesn't. Because he is love, and he loves me, and his mercies are new every morning, and his grace is there for me, and, and his love is unfailing and unconditional, and he is faithful, and I can come to him at any time, at any place, anywhere, and he receives me. But if your enemy can get you to believe that that is not true, you'll never go to him. Why? You'll be so focused on all the things that are wrong with you wasn't that many years ago that I would get ready in the morning when I went to Bible school and I could hardly look at my own face in the mirror and I would wait till the other students had left to put on my makeup I was broken I was wounded I didn't like the look of my own face and I would wait till it was dark and I remember one time standing in my bathroom and the lights are up. And I felt like as I was looking at me, Jesus stood behind me. And I immediately heard myself quickly go down the list of all the things that I still needed to work on. Yes, God, I know that I'm still impatient and I've been frustrated with this person and I wanted to shine the light on this injustice and, and, and God, yes, I blocked that person from my Instagram and I said some things and really, you know, I, I had an ulterior motive and I was so aware of all of these things and my shortcomings and I saw Jesus going, I'm not looking at you because of that. It's not about what's wrong with you. It's about everything that's right with you. Everything that's right with you is what I see. The rest, as you continue to focus on me and walk with me, that's going to work itself out, I promise you. But I want your eyes on me. And that takes me to the second area that offense creates an issue, and that is in our vision. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I'm going to say that again. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Pure of heart, I can see God. Pure in my heart, I can see God. How does that work with offense? Well, offense is a heart blocker. And out of the heart flow the issues of life. 
And the Bible has asked us to guard our heart above all things because life flows out of our heart. If your heart is blocked and contaminated, you lose your vision. You cannot see God. That's powerful. This is why it's so important to live a life where every single day we go before him, Father, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The things that I am not aware of, would you show them to me, Lord? I don't want a blocked heart. I want to have clear vision. I want to know where I'm going. I want to know where I'm going. And you can know. But the way to see is by keeping this unblocked and free. This is why it's so important to be pure in your heart. What does purity look like? Am I talking about perfection? I am not. I'm talking about that pure desire that you have that you come before God, recognizing all that he is. And all of you before all of him brings you to that place where you can lay it all down because God is not a finger-pointing, fault-finding, accusatory master. He's not. He's not. And the enemy would like you to think that that's who he is so that he's not approachable. And it's a lie. It's an absolute blatant lie. God wants your heart free, unclogged, unblocked, so that you can have vision. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful that he leads us this way. Oh, my goodness. I love it. You know, Jesus, beaten beyond recognition, brutally crucified. Not for one minute did he cuss at them. Did he curse their destiny? Did he call fire down from heaven? Y'all better be thankful I'm not God. Because, wow, when you see the price that he paid, you're like, Jesus. This isn't just a story that we read. This is what we say yes to when we come to the cross. And this is why living by the cross is our pathway to peace. If we stay focused on what's going on right here, the fence of offense, we're going to lose our way. But if you will keep your eyes on Jesus, your vertical connection with him will not be broken. And that is how we live. In the midst of chaos, we can have peace. And we don't have to be fragmented. This is beautiful, you guys. But it gets even better. The third one. Offense is going to affect your spiritual position and authority. In other words, your impact and your influence. When we were singing this morning about I am a child of God, it just was like booming within me about the truth of that. And that how he goes before us and that how he is our defender and he is our lover and he does the things that we cannot do for ourselves. This is the God that we serve and he is for us. And as we begin to sing it, I just felt the delight of the father going, yes, I love my people. I love my sons and I love my daughters and I have such great plans for them. But Marty, like you, so many of them are locked behind prison cells behind walls of offense where they don't actually think that I have seen the injustice that has taken place in their life, but I have, and I'm going to handle those that are handling you, says the Lord. I'm going to read to you something that I wrote. The offense wanting to take root in your heart is far greater than you just being offended. The enemy's strategy against you is to try and frustrate you so that what God has put on the inside of you will never fully manifest. Because if it does, the kingdom of darkness will be pushed back with great force. It is your enemy's strategy that what God has planted deep within you, called you to, ordained for you, will never, ever, ever see the light of day. Because if you can see the impact and the influence of all that God has entrusted you with, and when that begins to manifest, oh, the enemy knows that there is no going back. 
no going back. The littlest things, the littlest things that come at us to try to pull us down from building in the kingdom and put us behind the fence of a fence, those little things that begin to cloud our vision because our heart becomes, uncontam- becomes contaminated, those are the things that the enemy uses, throws himself a party because he knows if he can keep you there, you're never going to walk into all that God has for you. And you're going to get frustrated and you're going to get super impatient. God, when is my time? You said a whole bunch of things about me in my life. You know what? When I was in my 20s, I had some powerful prophetic words. As a young girl, I had some incredible prophetic words. Years of silence later, abuse, trauma, divorce. And a whole lot of other other things. And I'm walking into some of the very things that God said back then. But I didn't see it because I was so focused on everything that was swirling about me on the outside. What God has promised you, he will do. He will do. No matter what it looks like, no matter who comes at you, no matter who tries to take you down from the wall, no matter what is pressuring you, God is going to make sure that you are going to be kept in that place. Listen, let me tell you something. It takes a heart cry, help me, Jesus. That's it, church. That's it. God doesn't wait to answer your prayer by looking at a list of things that you have accomplished. That one has great faith. Oh, that one can speak. That one's the best tither in the church. Priorities, people. Come to me. Yep, you in this line, you in this line. No. God is not like that. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, will you show yourself to me? Because we have offered a gospel that has misrepresented the love of Jesus. And it has led many astray. So many people, so many young people could care less about coming to your church, listening to another service. And so the Lord, by his grace and by his mercy, is highlighting things that we can bring to him at the cross, move away from the fence of offense, walk into freedom, step into the things that he's called us to do. Anytime something comes your way to try to distract you, we have a tendency as humans to step out and away, and then the enemy can step in. And this morning, we're going to take some ground back. Because you're all an incredible group of men and women that are called to do great things for God. And we champion that in each other. Amen? We don't compete with that. We celebrate that. Because it's about what God has called us to do. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. And then he commissioned. He commissioned us. And so we don't want to do that with like one arm on one leg. We want to fully move into everything that he's called us to do because I don't know about you, but I want to see the sick healed. I want to see people that are oppressed with demons freed. I want to see those that don't know Jesus run to the altars. I want to see people that need supernatural provision. God is going to provide. I want I I want to be a part of the move of God that he is longing He's longing to bring. And it begins right here, right here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to untangle and uproot what we cannot. And here's what's beautiful. It doesn't take big faith. So when I was studying this in Luke 17... And Jesus is talking about it is impossible for offenses not to come. And then in that same chapter, he's talking about when somebody has an issue with you and to forgive them. And then the disciples are like, okay, how many times? And Jesus says 70 times 7. In other words, as many times as it happens to you, you forgive. I love the disciples' response. Oh, God, increase our faith. Seriously, they're like, are you kidding me? 
they connected big faith with a big fight or a big breakthrough. And now I know that it is, it pleases God for us to have faith. And there's that chapter in the Bible that talks about if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move, and it'll do that. So Jesus was talking about this little bit of faith. Well, he brings up that same mustard seed size faith in Luke 17. If you have faith even as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this sycamore tree, may you be uprooted and planted in the ocean and it will obey you. Now, God, here you're talking about a mountain in one chapter and you're talking about a small grain sized mustard seed faith. And now in this chapter, you're talking about a sycamore tree. Why? You know, everything Jesus does is with a purpose and for a purpose and he's very detailed and he's incredibly brilliant and um, we seek that out and so I begin to study about that a little bit the sycamore tree in this chapter when he's referring to forgiveness when I looked at how a sycamore tree's root systems are the roots don't go down super deep but they go really 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 wide I mean, they damage sidewalks, plumbing, like it is a whole mess. And as they grow and they grow out, they actually twist. And if you've ever seen a picture of it, it's like, oh man, you can't just uproot a sycamore tree. You just can't. That root system is so gnarly and so messed up. And yet when we understand what happens when we allow offense, judgments, pain, all of those things, and we keep them in our hearts, what does the Bible say? When a root of bitterness enters our heart, it defiles many. Not only that, back in Matthew, when I was reading, it's so powerful. Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. When your heart becomes contaminated, when there's a root of bitterness, when there's jealousy, where there's issues, where there's, I want to expose somebody, when these things even lay dormant in our lives, it's the breeding ground for deception. It's not just an offense church it affects every part of your life it affects your assignment from God it will affect your vision for what you are to do next and it affects your authority and your position in the spirit realm to know that you can move out as a son and as a daughter and proclaim and declare freedom and deliverance in other people these are big things. These are big things. This is how deception happens. Because sometimes it's easier to go to the phone than the throne. Man, when I was sitting in my car, I had about five people I was going to call right then and say, guess what? Guess what just happened to me? And how I was going to say it. And I had to take some time and really think about my next move, my next words. Because if the, if the enemy can keep you in that moment and he'll fuel that fire... He's going to halt you in every way, shape, or form. And not only that, your physical body will be connected. You cannot live in absolute bondage and be constantly tormented by the lies of the enemy and it not affect your sleep, it not affect your anxiety, it not affect your depression. So let me tell you, the root system that wants to take place in your heart through the little offenses that happen, that we refuse to lay down because we somehow think it's more spiritual to spend the next 40 years getting help and showing somebody how much work we have done. Jesus said it takes little faith 
to say to that sycamore tree, be uprooted, to deal with the things in your life that have held you bound for years, those generational sins, those generational curses, those behaviors, the way of thinking and doing. You can be free, my friend, in a moment, in a moment, in a moment. It doesn't take years. It takes a moment. How much faith do you have today? Is it just this little bit? It's all you need. This is freedom. Come on. This is freedom. Does it feel better to default to how hard it's going to be to be free? The clock is ticking. You have been called by God on purpose for a purpose to bring hope to a broken world. And as your sister in Christ, I don't want to see you locked up in some spiritual jail cell because the enemy keeps beating you up over and over again. You are wanted. You are accepted. You are called. You are anointed. God sees you. You are known. You are valued. You are loved. You can do great things in Christ. You have impact. You have influence. God has called you to impact your generation, and you can do it because greater is he that is on the inside of you than all of those things that try to hit you. So every single day, because offenses are going to come, what do we do? We live by way of the cross. We bow our hearts. You don't know the contents of my heart like Jesus does. I can make you think about anything. But what Jesus sees in me and about me is what's truth. And if there are things in my life that are hindering me from doing what he's called me to do, I have to. How can I not deal with that? Because every decision we make will impact somebody else. It's not just about you. There is a world that God has called us to reach. When he said, be fruitful and multiply, man, The gospel doesn't get out without multiplication. We are part of that equation. Multiply, multiply, raise up, speak truth, take risks, be bold, step out, be vulnerable. It's okay. It's okay. Jesus will meet you. Jesus will meet you. It's never easy to trust God when all hell is breaking loose. And especially when you've been wrongfully wronged. And I can feel it in the room right now. So many of you, the highlight reel of a lot of things are playing in your mind. But as as aware as I am of that, I am aware of the Father. And this morning, when I was praying on the way here, And even yesterday when I was praying, I saw literal jail cells, like the old-fashioned ones, like down in, in the earth, way down. And they were rusted out. And as Jesus was walking down the corridor of these jail cells, I saw these faces come close and peek behind the bars because there was some light. And I felt the delight of Jesus as he said, do you know how much joy it brings to me that we can partner together and unlock these prison doors and set people free? Do you know that that is his heart? That is his heart for you. Don't be stuck in an offense that has grown into a deep root that has locked you and blocked you, robbed you of your vision because that's the bait of Satan. That is how cruel your enemy is. When you are meant to break free out of that jail cell and you are supposed to lift your voice and begin to declare the power and the goodness of God. Amen? I'm going to close with a story. When I was going through my divorce and I've been married for almost 25 years and I know 25 years is a big deal when you've been married 
you get gifts people like that's awesome and it didn't happen and then I'm at my job for 10 years and 10 years is also supposed to be kind of a big deal and that didn't happen and you kind of feel like you've fallen short of some things and this is my story you have your story but there are areas where you feel like you've fallen short and there was another woman that came into my circumstances during this time. And she was next in line to marry the man that I was divorced from. And I received letters from people that I once held very close to my heart that were really brutal. And I received a letter from this woman and it was it was wicked evil awful and yet there was some truth in what she said that I owned it I took the bait and I owned it really believing the lie that some of these things that she had said were really me not only did I own the half truth and Jesus never speaks half truth he speaks full-on truth but not only did I own that, I had some anger issues in my heart. Because I didn't deal with them the way that I should have, it came out of my sleep. You ever wanted to kill people in your sleep? Yeah, not, not good. Things were coming out of my sleep and they were not good. And I remember sitting on the back deck of a place, actually the woman was in the first service her and her daughter, and they were the ones that had opened up their home to me. Uh, they didn't go to a church. Uh, they were incredible, beautiful people with their own struggles. And she said, I'm opening my basement to you. That was Jesus to me in that moment. And as I sat on her back deck with my Bible, I felt like the Lord said, I know this hurts. And I'm not asking you to not look at that pain because we need to deal with it. We need to deal with it. But deal with it, Marty, and then get up from that place. Don't stay in mourning. Get up. Did I feel like getting up? Nope. No. Oh. Was it the right thing to do? Yes. When I was ready to get up from that place, I wrote in my journal, I need to work on the issues of my heart. I need to guard my heart because the day will come when this woman is going to call me. And she didn't call right away. It didn't happen right away. And as I was traveling between the US and Canada because I couldn't leave in either country, working through legal things, I'm working in a mall in Red Deer, Alberta, and my phone rings and it's my lawyer. And he said, do you have a minute? I need you to just sit down. So I found a place to sit down. And he named the woman's name and he said, she left me a voicemail and she is desperate and in tears and wants to connect with you. Would you be willing to meet with her? Whew. That day had finally come. And it took me a while. I didn't do it right away. But on one of my trips back, for court. I remember parking in the parking lot by our courthouse and I dialed her number. I had no idea the conversation on the other end. I know there'd been a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and that there were days when I didn't know how I would get up and some of the things that this person had done and said were so devastating. I wasn't sure if I'd ever get over it. But in that moment, do you know that none of that mattered? She was so broken and so wounded, and I understood that. And we began to talk Jesus. And she actually came to one of our Monday night living waters because I shared about forgiveness. And she said that she would show up so that people knew that it actually had happened and she stood up and we honored her 
And so her and I are friends to this day. But what I'm saying is as a result, her life was changed. My life was changed. It affected my kids. It affected her kids. Every little decision that we make. And so I don't know what your story is. But I know there are some deep-seated wounds and some sycamore tree roots that have blocked your heart. And as a result, it's difficult for you to see the next thing in front of you, what God might want you to do. And he's not here to point his finger in the mirror and point out all of your faults. He said, hey, just takes a little bit of faith. Not a lot. A little bit to deal with that great, big, twisted root system. That's it. Man, there's hope in that for us, church. There's hope in that. There's healing. God doesn't want you stuck. He wants you free. He wants to restore identity to you. He wants you to know that the song that we were singing, that you don't have to be a slave to your circumstances. You don't have to live behind the fence of a fence, but that you can live free by way of the cross. Because for God so loved you that he gave it all so that you can come out of bondage. You can come out of religion you can come out of performance and you can be free to be who all you're called to be not even perfectly but perfectly whole in him man aren't you thankful for the cross so thankful for the cross Jesus Jesus we don't want to waste any more time behind the fence we want to boldly come to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy this morning. I don't want you to leave here and walk out those doors without knowing that you can be free. Freedom costs him everything, everything, everything. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? How many of you, this message clicked with something in you spoke to you God revealed something to you I'm going to ask you to stand boldly up on your feet Jesus Christ was bold when he hung on the cross he was not only bold he was completely naked here he was in front of everybody uncovered thank you thank you thank you for standing up thank you for standing up thank you Jesus 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 I've been praying for you. I've been asking the Lord to speak to me about some of you, not your life, but if he would have something to say to you. In this section during worship, I felt like the Lord highlighted a couple. I don't know if you're a couple. A sister with the white sweater. Yes. Is that your husband? Okay. Would you stand next to her? Yeah. I just see the love of Jesus covering you. I literally see bullet wounds, stuff that's hit you really hard in your back. Like there's some things that happened that you didn't see and it literally took you out, took your breath away. And you have wondered if God has actually seen it and how these things are gonna be corrected and made right. But the Father sees you this morning and he is ministering to that area. Let it go, let it go. I want you to breathe in. Ah, oh, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. If there are leaders here from Hope Church, if you would come, are you okay if we just have somebody come and, and lay their hands on you? In fact, would, would you be okay? I feel, I feel led to ask you. It's the sister, the beautiful lady in the white sweater right there and her husband in, in the plaid. Man, you've got an amazing prayer warrior coming to you right now. This sister is amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. The service is, is a little different, but I just wanna get in the front. So I'm coming for you, 
not just because I saw you when you walked in, but the Lord highlighted you all to me. And so I just want to pray over you guys. I know you're all musicians, but I really don't know your story, except that the next page in your life, it's been difficult to turn. And you've been actually wondering what's keeping that page stuck. Is there some sort of glue? Is there something that's going on? The Lord is going to simply, he's going to blow. That page is going to turn because you are ready. It's been a timing issue. It's been a trust issue. The Lord is very proud of you. Very proud of you. And don't be afraid of the highlighting that he wants to do in your life because you're needed in the body of Christ. You're needed. You're necessary. You're necessary. Father, I thank you what you're doing in this family's life. Lord, I thank you that you are turning the page. Lord, I thank you that they came here today and it's not an accident. Father, you brought them here. You called them here because you love them. And because they have a sound, a literal sound that sets people free. Father, I thank you. You're going to show them where to go because you are bringing back vision. He's bringing back vision. He's uprooting. He's uprooting those roots and he's giving you vision. Blessed are you, the pure in heart, for you will see God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just want to keep going, but you know what? I want to honor our time here. What I want us to do is I want to pray over you. But before we do that, I actually want us to get up on our feet. And I want the worship team to sing. I'm no longer a slave to fear. And as we sing it, I want to encourage you to to look at whatever that thing is, that sycamore tree in your life. And I want you to address it. Because when you sing, I am a child of God, you are addressing that thing, allowing it to be uprooted in your life. And I believe that the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, the God that called Lazarus out of the grave, the God that spoke to demons and they had to flee, is going to liberate and free you this morning. Amen? We're going to lift our faith. We're going to sing this out. We're going to sing it by faith. And then we're going to pray. today that you are a child of God. What a great message. 
If you're here and you are wondering, who is this Jesus they're talking about? How can I have this peace? How can I have this freedom in my life? Well, we would love to introduce him to you. It's as simple as saying, God, would you forgive me of my sin and make me right with you again? Would you come into my life so that I can know you? We have people over here to your right at our prayer banner that would love the opportunity to pray with you or ask your neighbor. But if you accepted Jesus in your life, come find me. I would love to celebrate that with you. Also, we have this prayer banner for a reason. If you need prayer for anything in your life, if you feel like you have this sycamore tree root system in your heart that you need somebody to pray with you about something in your life that you're struggling with, please get prayer today. Also, I want to remind you, our, um, our in our fireside room today, we're having an interest meeting for our Mexico mission trip for our high school students. So if you're interested, please meet us in there. And lastly, as you walk out today, we have a live it out moment. We want to hear a good word, but we want to also put it to action. So go before God and ask, God, is there anything in my heart that is keeping me from seeing you? Marty said that the pure in, in heart see God. Is there any offense that you have in your heart? Because God wants to get rid of that so that you can find freedom. And also, as Pastor Lance shared a few weeks ago about his vision for our church with being the light, we are asking that the first of every month that you find somebody to bring to church. We don't want to just be a body of people that know Jesus, but we want to have people that need hope. There are so many people in all of our avenues of life that need hope in Jesus. So be thinking about who you we're going to bring to church. All right? All right. It's been a great day in the house. Take this word to heart. Hope Church, we love you and have a great week.
closer to your